So I'm not going to bore you by just kind of reading through this novel of notes here, but um, I do want to say that it's, it's really important, um, like in reading this first little note here, that you understand we've developed certain things like multiplication and exponents because you, you, we find ourselves in life adding things frequently a lot. Like, say you wanted to add the number four 13 times. Like, you can write it out like this and add it 13 times. Or, like, we literally came up with symbols. Like, um, you guys are used to the X here, but we don't really use that much in algebra because we actually use the letter X. Um, or you can write them in parentheses like this. Or you can, we use this dot a lot, right, for multiplication. So we created multiplication because it's just way faster and easier to say 4 times 13 instead of saying, how many do you need? Oh, 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. You know, that would be annoying. And then we have the same thing, right? Like if you multiply things a bunch of times, like if you multiply 4 13 times like this, it just takes forever to write it like this. So instead of writing that, you just put a 13 above the 4 and say it's 4 to the 13th power. So it's important for us to, um, you know, that's like this who cares part, right? So we deal with variables a lot, and it's important for us to understand, like, when you multiply or add things, how we actually write that out. Okay, so um, we're going to uh, simplify this expression here. So we've got a bunch of stuff going on. We're adding and subtracting. What we want to do is, is we want to kind of pull everything together. And the reason we're doing this is because imagine you had like a, a you know, a couple boxes. And um, like in, in one of the boxes, you have some apples. I'm just going to do green things for apples. And then in another box you've got um, bananas, right? So you've got banana, I, you know, this is very rudimentary drawing here. Um, it, it, it would be helpful to say like, hey, in this box right here, right, you've got, um, you've got four apples. Maybe I'm just gonna put an A for apple. And then you've got two bananas, right? So you got um, two bananas. So I'm just gonna do a yellow B for that. And then in this other box, you've got, it's pretty clear that you've got one apple. And then you've got uh, three bananas, which I'm going to do the same thing, right? A green A for apples and um, a yellow B for bananas. So it would be helpful and convenient for us, like if we're taking inventory, to just be able to add these things up quickly, right? So if you have five, uh, four apples and one apple, right? like four apples here, one apple here, what do you have? You have five apples. And I know this is like insultingly simple, but this idea is very important. Uh, and then if you have two bananas and three bananas, you really have five bananas. So this is the idea of simplifying. We're taking a quantity or a certain number of things here, a certain quantity over here, <coughs> and we're trying to combine them to figure out how much we have in total. This is a very useful thing in the real world. So. Let's do this example here, okay? So uh, we're gonna distribute here. So we got, they want us to simplify this expression here. So this is an expression and we're going to distribute here. We're gonna distribute all three of these things. So two, x, two times x is two x, two times three is six, five times x is five x, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Five times two is 10. Um, negative four times y is minus four y, and then be careful here, negative four times negative two is positive eight, so we're gonna do plus eight here. Okay, so the, now the question is, let's combine uh, the things that are the same as each other. Okay, so we have two x's, we have five x's, so that means we have seven x's. Uh, are there any other variables here? So there, there are, so that we have minus four y, so I like to underline things as I take care of them. So minus four y. And then what else do we have left? We have six plus 10, that's 16, plus eight is plus 24. So that this final expression here, seven x minus four y plus 24, is the original expression simplified. These are equivalent, but they just look different, okay? So, so some very important things to say here. Um, we combine all the X's, that's how you read this, X's, because they are, so this is our little vocab here, they're called like terms. So we're going to write like terms here. 
meaning <coughs> we don't know how much each X is, but we know that each X is the exact same number. So this is kind of like the bananas and apples thing, right? Um, the X is kind of standing in for or representing some number or some thing, and I just don't know what that thing is. But the amazing thing with algebra is I know that if I have two of a thing and five of that same thing, that I have seven of whatever that thing is. And this is really crucial and important is that we can still do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division with variables, with these quantities, even if we don't know what they are. Uh, this is kind of the, the backbone of algebra and you know engineering and stuff like that, is that we can still work with numbers even if we don't know what the actual number is. Okay, um, Why are we not combining the x's and y's? Some people do this and they say, oh, 7x minus 4y is 3x or 3xy or something like that. Um, well, let me ask you this. If you had two, <laughs> go back to our example, like if you have two apples and uh, three bananas, like would you say you have five apples or five bananas or five apple bananas? No, like you have five things, but they're not all the same thing. So you wouldn't say that you have five apples or five bananas. And the same applies for X's and Y's. Just think of X's and Y's as like apples and bananas, right? If you have seven apples and you take away uh, four bananas, like that doesn't really even make sense to do. That's why we write it as 7x minus 4y. Like you can't say it's 3x or 3y or 3xy or something like that. So you just leave them separate. And the same thing goes for uh, variable expressions, something that has a variable in it, like x. x is a variable, meaning that it change, it varies, but we don't know what it is. x could be 1, it could be 10, but I want to... You know, I want to say, hey, if I have two of it and five of it, I have seven of it, whatever it is. I just don't know what number it is. Okay, so that's a variable. These are just called constant terms, like 24. It's just a number. Like 24 will always be 24, okay? Um, so important note here is we never combine variables with just numbers, with constants, okay? Um, and that's because, like, if you have two apples and you add, you know, eight to it, which doesn't really even make sense. You wouldn't say that you have 10 apples. I'm not saying that we're adding eight apples. I'm just saying literally the number eight, right? So we would just leave those separate, 2a plus eight. Um, okay, so, so that is like a really important crucial idea. Let's move on to the next page. Okay, so we're continuing on with uh, the next page here and they want us to simplify uh, six times x plus two. Uh, plus x times x minus 4. And so we're just talking about what happens here when we distribute. So 6 times x would be 6x, plus 6 times 2 would be 12. And then we have plus x times x. So now, now comes the question of notation. We know like 3 times x is just 3x. But if you have x times x, how do we write that? Well, this is where the exponents come in. You're gonna say that that is x squared. So whenever you multiply two things that are the same thing as each other, we say that it's squared. This works for numbers too, right? If we have three times three, most of us would just say, hey, that's nine, but you could actually write it as three squared because it's three times itself, okay? So that's really important. Since we don't know what x is, I, I can't give a number there, right? Like I know three times three is just nine. I would rather write nine instead of three squared because why would you write three squared when it's just nine? But the square is important because we need to know that this is not an X here. This is an X being multiplied by itself. And that's very different from just an X. What about um, the X times negative four here? Well, X times negative four is just negative four X. Okay, so you can, and I always like to write the number in front of the variable, right? You could say minus x times 4, but that would just be weird. So we, we typically put the number in front of the variable here. Okay, so um, now what we're doing is we are going to write this in, um, we're going to simplify this. So there are some things that we can still add together, but um, we generally like to have whatever the highest exponent is be our first term. Okay, so, um, so we're going to put this x squared first. So I've got that, and then now we have 6x minus 4x, so we're gonna need to combine those two things together. So if I have six of something, and I take away four of that thing, I now have two of that thing left. So it'd be 2x, and then plus 12, okay? 
So an important note to go with this is, this is another common mistake, is people want to add x squareds with x's. And again, this is kind of like the apples and bananas thing, or apples and oranges. If you're going to add two quantities together, they have to be the same kind of thing. You can't add apples and bananas. You cannot add x squareds with x's. This is why we just write them separately x squared plus 2x. It's not 3x or 3x squared or something like that. It's just x squared plus 2x. There's nothing else I can really do with that to simplify it. Okay, all right, let's look at our next example. Next example, 2 minus 3 plus x times x plus 2x times 4 minus 2 plus y squared. So this is just kind of a messy thing here. We have to follow the order of operations, right? So we have to do parentheses first. So if there's anything in parentheses that can be done, we have to do that. Uh, and then we're going to do exponents, which there is an exponent, but there's not really anything we can do. I don't know what y is, so I can't really square it. And then a multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So uh, parentheses, uh, I guess we could change 4 minus 2 to 2 if we wanted. Um, that'll make our life slightly easier. I don't want to take an entire line to write that. but Okay, and then um, so what do we have now? So we have... Um, Parentheses are done. Now we have multiplication. So if there's any multiplication, we need to do that first. So I do see some multiplication. There's some multiplication right here and some multiplication right here. So let's actually go ahead and multiply that out. And we're going to have to distribute here. So we're going to have 2 minus. Um, this is now going to be a 3x plus x squared because we're distributing that. So we're going to distribute the x to both those terms. This is going to be 2x times 2, that's 4x. And then the y squared, we're not doing anything with that yet, so we're just going to leave that there. Um, all right, so we've done multiplication, there's no division. Now we can move on to addition and subtraction. So um, we are going to do the subtraction first here because it appears first from reading from left to right. So we're going to distribute this negative sign. So we're going to have 2 minus 3x, we're going to distribute the negative sign here. This is really important, people don't distribute the negative sign to this uh, x squared term a lot, and it just messes you up. So you don't want to be messed up. OK, so now we've got this. And um, now we're going to kind of, if we can do addition and subtraction, we can do that. I'm going to kind of start to look for like terms here, because I think at this point, I've got pretty much everything multiplied out. So. And again, I'm going to look for any x squared terms or y squared terms and write those first. It doesn't really matter which one you put first, whether you do the x squared or the y squared. So I'm just going to do x squared because I guess x comes first in the alphabet. So negative x squared plus y squared. What else do we have? Do we have any x's? So we have 4x and negative 3x. So that's going to be when you put those together and combine those, if you have 4 of something and you take away three of that thing, you're gonna have one of that thing. So you're gonna have plus one X. I'm not gonna bother writing the one. Uh, and then you have plus two there at the end. So that would be your final resulting expression. That would be the simplified form of this guy right here. Okay, so hopefully that's pretty clear on that. Um, last thing here that we need to talk about is uh, absolute value. Okay, so um, really the what absolute value exists for is um, really kind of for engineering and physics, and also like sometimes in um, business, uh, and not really so much in business, but um, it's helpful like to know, hey, are you know if somebody's five feet away from you, are they five feet in front of you or five feet behind you? Or if a car is traveling five miles an hour, is it going five miles an hour north or five miles an hour south? A lot of times we don't really care if it's five feet in front of or five feet behind, right? Like with uh, social distancing and the coronavirus stuff, it's just, hey, you need to be at least six feet away. I don't care if you're six feet in front of me or six feet behind me, you just need to be at least six feet away from me. And so absolute value is a really helpful quick tool to just check a number and to figure out how far away that number is or what the difference is or something like that. And if that's confusing, I'll explain it here a little bit more. But basically, if somebody is seven feet behind you, you might say that their distance is negative seven, but you don't really care that it's behind you, negative seven. So you're just gonna say, how far away are they? Well, they're seven feet away. We just need a way to quickly look at a number and say, hey, um, if it's negative seven, really the number I care about there is the seven. And that's where absolute value comes in. So absolute value 
is just a, a little tool that we have that will quickly um, evaluate a number and say, hey, look, if it's positive, great. Like if you're seven feet in front of me, awesome. Then your, the, your distance from me or the absolute value of positive seven is just seven, you're seven feet away. But if you're seven feet behind me, I might say that your distance is negative seven, but really all I care about is that you are seven feet away from me. So what we what all absolute value does is it looks at a number. If it is negative, it just makes it positive, okay? Uh, but there are some impor important caveats to this. Um, like for example, six, a lot of people screw up example six, okay? So, um, okay, so example four here, um, they want you to simplify. This is saying, hey, what is the absolute value of five, okay? So the question is, if somebody is like five feet in front of you, the question is, how far away from you are they? So the quick and fast rule here is to just say, hey, if the number in here is positive, then it stays positive. If it's negative, make it positive. <clears throat> so the absolute value five is five. <clears throat> how about if somebody was standing five feet behind you? So negative five, how far away are they? Well, if it's negative, make it positive. So the absolute value of negative five is five. Then we get to examples like this, example number six. This is really crucial. If uh, you have an expression inside of the absolute value, you have to do what's inside there first, then apply the absolute value rule. So don't just say, oh, seven minus three, oh, absolute value just makes things positive. Look, this must be seven plus three. No, 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 no. What this is doing is it's saying, hey, if somebody is standing on the number line at seven and somebody else is standing on the number line at uh, three, the question is really a question of how far apart are those people. So imagine a number line here and here's seven and here's three. And so if somebody's standing here and somebody's standing here, how far apart are they? Well, um, you would, you know, seven minus three is four. And that's, that's how you figure out how far apart people are. That's actually what subtraction is used for a lot. It's used to, you know, in finance to figure out, um, you know, if I have money and I owe somebody money, how much money do I have left? But it's really useful to figure out distance. Okay, so seven minus three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that this is equal to, um, we're, not, we're gonna leave the absolute value alone and we're gonna do seven minus three and say, hey, that's four. Now the question is, what's the absolute value of four? Well, it's just four, okay? Now, what's interesting and super helpful here is absolute value doesn't care where you are it just finds how far you are apart. So if you asked, hey, this is like asking, hey, how far is seven from three? How far is seven from three? It's four away. This question now, example seven, is asking how far is three from seven, okay? So if you did three minus seven, you would get negative four, which is cool because that makes sense. Three is four behind seven. So it makes sense that you would get negative four. But again, really care about if you're in front of or behind I literally just want to know how far apart are you from seven so what you do here is you do the absolute value of three minus seven is negative four so you do the subtraction inside then you apply the absolute value rule so if you are negative four which means you're four behind then how far are you well if it's negative make a positive so negative four the absolute value of negative four would be positive four okay so that's the basic idea of absolute value. It's, really, it's super helpful in programming too. Um, just to say, hey, I'm four away, great. I don't care if I'm up in front of or behind. Okay, how about example eight? So we're gonna do the absolute value here. So this is gonna be equal to the absolute value of, and then we're just gonna follow the order of operations. So if you have parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction inside of the absolute value bars, you just do the normal order of operations. So in this case, we're gonna do uh, two minus four, and then we're gonna do what's inside the parentheses, right? Parentheses first. And then we're gonna leave the absolute value bars alone. And we're gonna do two minus, there's multiplication here, four times seven is 28. And then we're gonna say that this is equal to two, so absolute value of two minus 28. What's two minus 28? It's negative 26. And then what would the absolute value of negative 26 be? It would just be 26. So really this is kind of like saying, hey, how far apart are two and 28? So they are 26 apart from each other. So that's how you would do that one. 
How about this one? So this is gonna be the absolute value of negative two minus nine. We're gonna do that first inside. So that's gonna be negative 11, and the absolute value of negative 11 is positive 11, okay? And then make sure you check these notes out about um, absolute value. So the first thing is you wanna treat it just kinda of like parentheses, so if there's anything inside of it, you wanna do everything inside of it first, then evaluate it. Um, all right, well that's it for that.